perfect lead into this spectrum of manifestations that patients might have. Elliot, maybe you could talk about that um, neuropsychiatric type symptoms. What do you see? What do patients complain of? Yeah, so I think the key thing is to listen to the patient with cirrhosis and to actively look for cues that they could be developing hepatic encephalopathy. And one of the first things that patients are going to tell you is that there's a reversal of their sleep-wake cycle. They're having difficulty sleeping, but they're, uh, uh, but they're sleeping during the day. And another thing which is exceedingly common and in fact, highly predictive of the presence of hepatic encephalopathy on formal neuropsychiatric testing is stumbling or falls. Patients with hepatic encephalopathy have a prevalence of falls in a given year of 40%. And when they fall, they're gonna break their hip. And when they break their hip, it's a, it's a disaster for them. So you're looking for uh, difficulties with balance. You're looking for difficulties with sleep. They're going to be more irritable and impatient with themselves, eating less than usual. Those sorts of changes in patient reported outcomes or executive function are key to those early stages. As we progress through the uh, later stages, something uh, perhaps worth talking about, um, those are the kinds of things that you would uh, pick up more likely in somebody with waxing and waning mental status might end up in the emergency room. And in that type of patient, when you're concerned, this is a, a very common question I get. Should you be sending an ammonia level in, in the blood work? Because you, you mentioned ammonia can be implicated in the pathogenesis of HE. Is that a helpful test, do you think? Yeah. In practice, ammonia is not a helpful test. And there's several reasons for that. One, recall that there's other things going on in the body of a patient with cirrhosis in addition to that ammonia level. So they can be fully encephalopathic and have a relatively normal level if they're in the setting of a high inflammatory burden with an infection like a UTI or, or cellulitis. Number two, how do you get that ammonia level? Well, you can't use a tourniquet. If you use a tourniquet, you're going to increase the ammonia levels 10, 15 percent, and your values are useless. You got to put it immediately on ice. Preferably, you've taken it out of the artery, and then the lab has to stop everything that they're doing, and they have to run it immediately. Does this happen in practice? No. <laughs> so for that reason, ammonia is more of an academic thought. Mm -hmm. right? In practice, it just doesn't help us. The guidelines are very clear about this, Arun. <clears throat> Serum ammonia levels are not to be checked routinely in practice. I have patients, I'll give you an example. I had a patient not long ago come to me who is an accountant, never had any issues with his mentation, no work-related issues, nothing. And he told me his doctor for two years, every week, was checking an ammonia level and he was on lactulose. And you know, patients exaggerate sometimes, I thought uh, every week, it was probably four times a year. Finally, I didn't have the records. I get the records about a couple days later, and he literally had over a hundred checks of a serum ammonia levels for over the last few years. It was every week. And when the ammonia level was a little bit high, even though he had no symptoms, he was getting, he was put on lactulose and his lactulose dosage was adjusted. So I, the first thing I did, of course, was stop his lactulose, which made him very happy. But this is an example how, of how ammonia levels should not be used. The only time they say consider them, us getting ammonia levels, is when a patient is confused and you're confused as to when the patient is confused. So if both of you are confused, that's a good time to get an ammonia level or to consider it because then if the ammonia level is markedly elevated, it might push you to more towards a diagnosis of HE. For instance, if a patient has seizures and you're not sure if at home they're having postictal periods or if they're having HE, maybe you would draw an ammonia level then. But the bottom line is, in a cirrhotic patient, it's not necessary to check ammonia levels, and really it shouldn't be done. Great. And it's also important because as we focus on higher value healthcare, it's an unnecessary test with a cost attached to it, so it's one way we can, we can minimize unnecessary spending.